Okay, we get to go first. Pretty decent cards. I can't really complain about this. South Still Seek is cool because it says whenever an artifact comes in, look at the top. Look, look at the top card. If it's a land, put it into your hand. So if we get Lonus out next turn, we can get the Zareth. The Quandrix Apprentice is really similar. Whenever you cast a spell, instant sorcery, look at the top um, three cards. So that's really cool as well. So let's start the train here. Oh, fight spell. That's going to be fantastic. So yeah, if you guys like synergies and triggers... This could be the deck for you. There is a lot of stuff going on in here. You've got ETBs, the tap abilities, sacrifice abilities, artifacts that do things. Um, Cannon's trans transformation. So that's going to turn this into a 3-3. Three, three. We could sack a clue here. Um, just to look at the top one card, but it's unlikely we'll get anything, so let's just save them for later. Interesting, so the, they've immobilized the Lonest, Lonest here. We can actually kill the Lotus Cobra though, and I think, I think I will do that, because that's going to slow them down a lot. It's the difference between them having the sw Swift Foot Boots equipped and not having it equipped next turn. Two, three. The channel is going to be fantastic to bounce the Rothka as well. Let's go for the Ledger Shredder. I'm actually pretty confident with this um, this start here, especially against Mono Green, which is a really nice deck to face because <laughs> it means they can't counter your things and kill them so quick. And so the next time they play a creature, it gets double power. Okay, that's scary. So I think we're going to go for the channel here, bounce the Rothka. And then next turn, we might get lucky and be able to do it again with the Thassa. But until then, we are just going to have to deal with a double power creature with potentially haste, which is scary as hell. Especially if they can keep replaying the Rothka. So now it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Ooh. Ooh. And it's going to have haste as well. Not going to block that. Jeez, we could literally just... We could literally die. <laughs> Very, very, very soon. Uh, let's go for the Thassa. And start swinging in with these two, I suppose. Oh no, we're going to bounce the channel anyway, aren't we? Or flicker anyway, so. Down to nine. So, now, this has got Trample, which is very problematic. But I think what we'll do, we'll make a blocker, because if they play another creature with haste, we can hopefully block that as well. Great Henge, oh my goodness, for two mana. So they've got four, six mana here. If they play another spell, we get to draw a card. And then discard. I think we'll get rid of the Prentice. So that's an 8-8, eight, eight, which also has Trample. Oh my goodness. That is horrific. The haste changes everything here. So yeah, we might as well take that. Oh dear. I think we're probably actually just dead, aren't we? So Rothka is so good. We can tap down one of the things. Can we actually win this turn? One, two, three, four, five. So we can give a creature plus... So that's one... Two, three. So we can't turn her online. Trample is going to kill us next turn, whether we like it or not. Maybe we just attack in the air and then tap one of their attackers. Oh, no, it does turn it online. One, two, three, four. Oh, we still get the pip from that. So if we tap this, how much damage is that? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's it. That's lethal. Yeah. I didn't realise the, the pip was there. Okay, my bad. Alpha strike. I almost missed lethal there. Goodness me. That was... Yeah, keep that in mind, guys. Kenrith's transform transformation doesn't reduce the pips to green. Damn. 
Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new video. Today's video goes out to one of my special channel members called Jonaroth. So thank you once again for being a channel member. If you would like your own video made and to see the details of how to become a member, check down below, click the member button, membership button, and you can see the different tiers available. The commander curator tier allows me to make you a commander deck once per month, so check that out. So, looking at Lonus Cryptozoologist, which is a really powerful card that hasn't really seen much play in the meta that I've been playing in for a long time now, but when it came out, she was really strong, and I can totally see why. It's actually a very technical and very difficult deck to kind of get right, because there's so many different directions you can go in. This deck, for instance, is more of a ETB, uh, an artifact styles matters deck, but you... Yeah, you can just go in so many directions. Let's have a look at what the card actually does. Whenever another non-token enters, creature enters, investigate. So investigate is a clue token. It's a bit confusing because it says investigate, but you create a clue. I think they've just shortened it to make a clue now. But a clue just pays to sack, draw a card. So it sounds pretty simple, but you can tap, sack X clues, target opponent reveals the top X cards of the library. And you may put a non-permanent card with mana value X or less from among those onto the battlefield under your control. So it steals cards from your opponent's deck, essentially. Against certain decks that care about spells, this is not so effective. But most people play a fair amount of non-creature, non-instance and sorcery spells. So you should be able to get something. So the way to utilize this, I've gone for the Panamonican route. So when something comes in, it will give you two clues instead. Which I think is pretty cool. You can also use the Thassa to essentially double that trigger again. And then you want to abuse that with ETB creatures like Topio Stomper comes in. It gets you a land from the battlefield. Visionary draws you a card. The Briar Bridge Tracker gives you an, a clue when it comes in anyway. So that's really good. Loads of synergy. Stuff like Uro will give you two synergy, uh, two triggers with the Panamonican. And then we've got some really niche cards that you don't really see in many decks whatsoever, which is quite cool. That's what we like on this channel. Steelfin Whale is pretty nice, I thought, because Affinity means it gets cheaper for each artifact you have. So a lot of the time, this is going to cost you one blue, four, three, four, which is not fantastic, but it's a really good rate. And it, whenever an artifact comes in, you can untap Steelfin Whale. There's lots of cards that care just about having artifacts. You've got stuff like Erdwall Illuminator, which lets you investigate twice if it's the first time you've done it this turn. Uh, Daring Sleuth lets you sack a clue to transform him. Well, you can sack a clue yourself and he transforms into a 3-2 prowess. And then he investigates when he hits. So there's loads of investigate synergy, which is a bit weird because you don't probably think about this as a mechanic because it's just not used very much in the, in the meta that we see these days. Inspiring Statue is probably the most broken card in the deck because you can tap the clues to pump out your non-artifact spells. So if you've got five clues out, you can tap them all to cast non-artifact spells. You can cast the, the River's Rebuke, for instance, for two blue if you had four or five uh, clues out. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways to go, and it's quite overwhelming, to be honest, how many there are. Tamiyo's Journal, Investigate once per upkeep. So once you get all these clues out, you can either kill them, the opponent, by sacking them to steal your opponent's big things, or you could use something fun like Filigree Attendant, which doesn't look so good, but Power and Toughness equals number of artifacts you control. This can get out of hand really, really quick, because, you know, if you've got 10 artifacts, this is going to be 10, 10 damage in the air. So don't forget that. Even though it's an uncommon, it's really good, and it's got flying, which means it's got evasion, which is lovely. So the deck list will be in the description below. Thank you, Jonaroth, for... Um, the, the idea to make this deck. I really hope you enjoy it. And as I said before, if anyone wants their own decks being made in the future, you can really help me and help support the channel by becoming a channel member where you can donate to the channel. And uh, let's get into the gameplay and I hope you all, all enjoy it. Also a shout out to all my other members. You know who you are, so thank you very much. Okay, so we're seeing Emoti, which I think has been recently popularized by might have been LVD, some very big uh, YouTuber who's made this, everyone like to play this now, so let's see how we can do. It's a really solid card, really, really solid. Cascade and big spells have Cascade as well. Kami. Pretty sure this is LVD's list. So what can we do? It's got Flash, that's got Instant, so we don't need to do anything yet. Although actually... 
We'll go for the loners here, I think. So the invasion of Ravnica is not going to be able to kill the Emoti, annoyingly. So they're going to be able to play Emoti next turn. And we don't have a way to currently kill it. So much mana already. Go for the Stomper, ramp ourselves as well. So we're going to get ourselves a land and also a a clue. Might as well swing in here. So if they cascade into something big and one colour, we can deal with it with the invasion of Ravnica, which will be useful. And it's a Lanoir Visionary, so we could we could kill that just to slow them down a bit. Might be worth it. Just just take them off a bit of mana. And we can't attack into it sadly yet, but it would be really nice to to get the other side of that because whenever we cast a spell that's uh, exactly two colours, we look at the top six. And you can get a card that's two colours into your hand. Body of Research is going to give them a... How big is this going to be? They get an 83-83, which is a kind of weird. Create a fractal, put counters on equal to number of cards in library. Right. That... <laughs> I don't even have words. This is This is Simic. Simic silly, right? This is a silly card. Six mana for an 8181. That is problematic. That is very, very, very problematic. Unless we have a bounce spell, then it doesn't seem so bad, does it? Enter spell for the number of counters on equal to the greatest number of creatures. Oh, I imagine it said equal to um <laughs> Imagine it said equal to the greatest power. Be funny. So we're going to get th um, three counters. You can remove a counter to uh, draw a card, basically. I think we need blockers now. Although, if they give that, if they get this trample, which is dead anyway, so. Okay. I'm scared, guys. 83, 83. Pretty much think we've lost this, especially if they if they give this trample, then um, yeah, we're just doomed. But currently we can block it. As if. Crater Hoof as well. Okay, I mean, we're dead anyway, to be honest. So. Oh, and an extra turn. Okay, this has got to be one of the most... Uh, this has got to be one of the most toxic wins I've ever seen in terms of just cards that you've seen before.com. So, it doesn't... Oh, it does give it trample, doesn't it? Yeah. Trample, yeah. Okay. Well, there's, there's no point blocking. Cool, man. Cool, bro. Let's play magic together. Okay, we've got a pretty decent starting hand. Versus an artifact equipment deck. Really powerful. Zero to equip anything once per turn. And it gives you a boost of plus two. Kind of a scary card. So I could just come and tap. I'm not sure if that is that worrying, but Sword of the Realms. Okay, so they got a lot of equipment. Well, they got one equipment before the creature, so I'm not that scared yet. There's going to be a lot of triggers in this game.
uh, but yeah, I'm pretty confident with my hand. We have a tempo swing with the Brazen Borrower. So this is going to be equip cost of one, which is very, very, very good. Anything that equips for one is kind of ludicrous, to be honest. I can't actually attack yet, though. Right, let's start looking for lands with the South uh, Steel Seeker here. Into the north. I'd rather just get a land. And we're just building up the Cryptozoologist here. There's still no land. I, I want to be able to hit my invasion next turn. So I think the Trample is the scariest thing here. But they don't have it yet. They've also got two lands. Gold, Vein, Pick. Okay. So the annoying thing is if they attack in, then they can return the creature to their hand. If we trade. But I'd rather just draw a card and get a land. Okay, we get a land. So I think we're, I think they just don't really have a chance anymore, sadly, for them. Let's get rid of the sword, because that's the thing that gives them the most value. Happy to just trade if they really want to, but I doubt they will because they've got the gold vein pick. If they get a land here, they could they could still hang in there, but I just think without without any more mana, there's not really too much of a chance. Okay, they get the red source, guys. They get the red source. Rune Forge Champion comes in. You can search the library and go for a rune. Reveal it, put it into the hand. If you search your library, shuffle, you may pay one rather than the mana cost for the rune. This is a great card, and it's quite balanced at the moment because only five to six runes from Carl Time. But if we go back to Carl Time, I'm 100% sure they'll make more runes. And instead of using them with Lonis, basically we've got a secondary commander here, Sage of Lightning, which lets us draw cards, which is kind of awesome. So this is great because investigate twice. And it's a flyer. So we're going to get a few triggers here. Yes, we get a land. Fantastic. We really needed that. And we get to do it again. Another land. And a Gargaroth. That's wonderful as well. And we can use the hard evidence. So you can see here how just these little uncommons, like South Sarath, uh, Steel Seeker is is a huge game changer, and I, I love it when you can turn uncommons into rares. Essentially, this feels like a rare in this deck. Maybe not in others, but the rate in which we can get artifacts out is crazy. Oh, forging turrets, well that's good. It gives them a treasure for two turns, and then the third turn after they get to two different any equipment, which is really wonderful. God, I love this card so much. Mostly because the artwork is crazily good. It reminds me a lot of Thor. The Thor movies, with especially with the Rainbow Bridge and um, Heimdall. I guess that's the whole reason, you know, Thor was also based on this kind of mythology. Swinging for two. Am I happy to trade? Probably. Do they have a trick? But that would have to use a treasure. Man, they wanted to use a treasure for that. I'm kind of... I'm kind of happy, to be honest. Let's use some treasures here, see what we get. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe we get something like a removal spell or... We really get permanence though, none land permanence. Oh my goodness, two swords! That's crazily good. That is crazy. <laughs> All right, then let's a swing and hit hit them. We can even draw more cards with the hunter's insight if we want to, but we're all going to get two with this anyway. So I think we save that for now. Well, we definitely have to go for the panamonican because that's awesome. Yeah, damn. Using their sword is feels feels naughty. Wavesifter is 
is a lot like Mole Drifter. It just it just um a bit slower because Mole Drifter comes in, you draw two, but this comes in, you investigate twice, which is similar, but it's also a bit stronger. So they're gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna bounce the sword though, because otherwise I'm not gonna be able to block it this game. Oh sweet, and that was enough apparently. But let's just say they did actually attack in. They would have milled us for 10 and they would have got a 2-2 two -two wolf, but it would have also had pro blue and green. And I'm not sure how I would deal with it apart from bouncing the sword for one turn. I think they should have stuck with it because I, I don't know if I would have been able to deal with this long term, maybe short term. But yeah, that was a cool little showcase of sometimes stealing one card is potentially enough to pretty much win you the game with the value this would have given us. Sweet, we get to go first against the new Nasa, which is an absolutely incredible card. I recently had to get a couple in paper just because she's so freaking good. So good. Fairly scary, but only in mid to late game when there's a lot of creatures on the field. Uh, start with the tap band, actually, and then we can go for the ball next. Into Lonus, and then probably the Visionary, which is a really wonderful start, especially with the invasion out. And hopefully the opponent sticks around long enough for us to do some cool things. White, red. Very good removal colours here. Planar Disruption. So we can't tackle block or activate any abilities. Okay. So it's basically just an ornament right now. Oh, it still has passives though. The passive's still there. That's going to be helpful, to be honest. So because they've played an aura, I do wonder if this is an aura's build. Really, really insanely good art here for a common once again. Two pure stumper. Let's see if we can get ourselves some more mana. And I guess essentially we're looking for a way to get rid of this enchantment. Because otherwise our deck is a little bit poopy. Without the, uh, without the ability here. Yes, we still have the you know the long game aggro route. Actually, the invasion could also exile the plane of disruption. That is something this can do. Narset, so she can cast stuff from our graveyard, which is very strong indeed. But for now, yeah, let's just try and get rid of this uh, disruption. So now, Lonus can can do stuff. Oh, I should have tapped differently because then I can't actually play the blue spells now. Oh, that's annoying. So if she wants to, she can cast the Secrets of the Key. Because the original mana cost is one. It's weird, right? Because you have to press the right trigger, sorry, the right click on this, this to actually see the original casting cost. Because in the graveyard, it actually says four, but it's not. Two Narsets is... Kind of terrifying, especially when they, she can recast it again from the graveyard to get three Narsets here. Witness protection. Oh my goodness. It is like a weird aura Z build. Okay. So she's going to cast Secrets of the Key rather than the Vile Duplication. That is weird. Let's kill this. That is a bit weird to have two auras in a row to, to stop my commander, but at least it's not dead. Could be worse. We did just ramp them up as well, which is not great, to be honest. Prowess takes it to seven power. Or it's two prowess, eight power. Holy crap. So not one not set is pretty pretty damn good, but two is pretty terrifying, really. Take the eight though. A bounce spell would be really good right now. Blizzard Brawl. That does actually... That does actually help. Let's try and kill one. Hopefully there's no prowess here. Right, so that makes it a bit nicer for us. So we get to double investigate here, which is kind of awesome.
lots of clues. Oh, no, we don't want to tap that. We want to get to battle. Take that down a peg. Nice. Now, the scary thing is that there's a blizzard, a blizzard brawl in our graveyard here, so they could just use that to kill one of our guys. Which is a bit sad, but that is just how nice that works. River's Rebuke. Holy crap. Five, six. Right. It's going to have to be something good. <laughs> Are we going to get anything? Elspeth Conquer's Death would be perfect here. Invasion of Goba Khan. I guess we can draw a card. Because otherwise this goes back to their hand. What's the wording of River's Rebuke? Controls. Yeah, I don't want to give them that. But then they'll get that back as well. Either way. Okay, fine. Let's go for the invasion here. See what's in the hand. My goodness. Go for that. Yeah, that is actually really annoying because now they get all that stuff back. And also, even worse than that, the rebuke is still in the graveyard, so they can eventually just recast it. Oh, it has to exile something. Okay, so we've actually they've just got rid, rid of that now. So we can use this to bounce a creature. That's good. So let's get a land first. Counter artifact or enchantment and then bounce something. Okay, yeah, I think we'll just hold off for a second then. So if they cast the invasion, we can counter it. Jaya. Oh, we can't counter that though. Four, five. We can still bounce her though. See what mode they go for. They're going to create a, prow a prowess. Go on, impress me. Sorcery. Damn, we can't. We can target artifact or enchantments, but not sorcery. That's annoying. Lots and lots of prowess. Right, let's just bounce it here. Hopefully, there's no counter spell or anything. Okay, good. Three creatures there, that's ridiculous. Let's exile the Gyre. Good, good, good. You win some, you lose some. And we've got a Vigilance attack here, which is pretty solid. Yeah, Vigilance is great against a deck like Narsets because they're constantly going to want to attack in. Sweet. Okay. Celestus, prowess trigger. One, two, three, four, five, and Narset as well. And they can also go for the invasion of Gobakan if they really want to. Oh, actually, they can't because this land's going to come in tapped. No, they can't. Okay, yeah. We really, we really need another answer for Narset here. So, what do we do? Maybe go for this. Investigate for the first time, you get an additional thing. Right, okay. So this is kind of like a mana rock in a weird way. So this will be the first time that this comes in. Nice. Now we can cast this for one green, which is just silly. Oh my goodness. Going off with the statuary here. Play this. Reel this. And then we'll swing in to the invasion. Which they're just going to block, which is fair enough. The thing I'm worried about is if they can get Narset's power to 7... They can cast the River's Rebuke. It has to be higher than the CMC. So, okay, they're going to block. 
which is which is good because it reduces the power level so much. All the no, yes, no, maybe. Take care of that. Get some more clues. Okay, so it's been a good game so far. So even if we do dodge this, well, I've done some cool things. Can't really complain, to be honest. Would have been nice to get this out because then when we would have cast a Zemo in, we could have got another card from our deck. Oh dear, that's not good. Eternal Wanderer, so she can reduce our creatures down to one each. For each player. I guess we might as well use this first. Mm, and just hope for the best. Okay. So we don't want a creature because they'll they'll kill it, really. So we want some kind of other thing. Nothing? Oh, that's such a shame. You live because I allow it. And then they're also going to be able to cast something from either of our graveyards, which is just pretty sad. But if they do attack, then the Eternal Wanderer is defenseless. Invasion of Gobakan as well. Nothing in our hand they can trigger. But if they do attack that, then they're going to get a buff. Creatures gain hex with indestructible. Okay. I... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that works. Now they've got another block. Although, the, if they had just attacked us, we would have been halfway to being dead, right? So. Yeah, that was a really good hit. They got all the Eternal Wanderer. In fact, it was far better than a board wipe because it means they get to keep Narset. And it gets a counter. Jeez. Great Henge. Is that going to be any good? Probably not. I can't really see myself staying alive much longer. I suppose I can just play another spell. We can block if we need to. Like, one of these, um, we probably will need to, because the Elspeth's going to come in, trigger prowess, tri yeah, yeah, we're just dead. Oh well. And yeah, if they cast any non creature spell, this will be 6 power. Elspeth can put a counter on this 7, which means they can river res rivers rebuke us again. So yeah, 2 rivers rebukes in one game is pretty rough, but oh well. We can win this do they see that play? That is the best thing they can do. Guarantees victory. Elspeth comes down. Double per prowess. Six power. Elspeth comes down. Puts a counter. Seven power. Attacks with both. Cast the river's rebuke. You can also cast the wanderer's command to put two more counters on if you wish. And that's the game. I'll light your way on these dark streets. In essence, we've been board wiped three times this game. So once with the Wanderer and and once with a Rebuke and who knows, maybe one more. Okay, so they're trying to see how much damage they can do, I guess. But uh, they can't actually equip this somewhat, ironically. So they probably don't even need to pump anything now. They can just minus three if they really want to. Because they can now go for the Rebuke either way. I know there's a hero inside you. It's really not that hard. Just swing in. Even giving them the joy of finishing me off. What? They want to go for the... Oh no, they get two targets, don't they? Okay, so that's the first one. It doesn't make you any more honourable by not choosing the rebuke, by the way. Um, you've already done it once, so you're kind of trolling at this point when you just don't do the thing. Like, if you put in a river's rebuke, just use it. Like, what's the point of not using it? You, you could clearly see it. Sure. Command zone. Ooh, I'll never be able to cast this again. Also, I'm dead, so... When someone's already dead and you're just prolonging their death, it's that's just a bit unsporting, to be honest. I'm not pressing anything here. You can just finish me off. Mm, okay, cool. 
Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.